We continue now at the top of Daf Kimmel Amid Beis and Maseches Baba Basra. This is Baba Basra Daf Three B. And the previous summer, the Gemara said, "There's a machlokas Amoraim. What does it mean that the second Beis Hamikdash is going to be greater than the first? The first opinion of the Amoraim is that the pasuk means to say that it's going to be greater in terms of its structure, meaning it's going to be a taller structure than the first Beis Hamikdash. And the second opinion is Bishanim. We're talking about the amount of years that the second Beis Hamikdash would stand." Rashi explains Bishonim Bayis Rishon Ahmad Dalid Meos Veeser. The first Beis Hamikdash it stood for four hundred and ten years. U Bayis Sheni Dalid Meos Veeser. The second Beis Hamikdash stood for four hundred and twenty years. So two understandings of that pasuk. But the Gemara comments Veisa Laha Veisa Laha. Both are actually true. Meaning the second Beis Hamikdash actually did stand longer than the first Beis Hamikdash, and it actually was taller than the first Beis Hamikdash. Just an argument. What exactly the pasuk was referring to. And the Gemara continues, The Gemara in the previous summit had said that the reason why there was no Amatrax and the reason why there was not a wall separating between the Kodesh and the Kodesh Kadashim in the second Beis HaMikdash is because it was higher than 30 Amos. Since it's higher than 30 Amos, so that thickness of six Tvachim is not going to be enough to have a wall be stable at more than 30 Amos. And so therefore they had to have a curtain. And so the Gemara now is asking, why not have 30 Amos wall and then the rest just make a curtain? And that's what it means. Why not do it that way? And the Gemara answers to that. When we say that you can have a wall that's 30 amos high, uh, let's say it's six tvachim thick, that also means to say that you also have a roof and you have plaster. That's when havikoi. That's when it's able to stand. But below tikru maziva lo havikoi. But if you didn't have that roof, meaning if it just went up some of the way, 30 amos, and then the rest was curtain, so it wasn't attached to a ceiling, so then you have a problem, lo havikoi, then it's not going to stand. And Rashi explains, Agav Tikru Maziva Shoalio Haisanasuna Olav, because the top was on top of the wall, Umaziva Shal Tit Tarkas Algab, and then you had some tit, you had some plaster that was attaching it, Vikhovat Hamasa Mamin Hakosal, Shaloyita Shaloyata Lestad, and that would help that the wall doesn't go, doesn't tilt to the side. Hilkach therefore Bemikta Shani Shalohaya Kosal Lamin Magia Lalia, where a thirty Amos high coastal one will not reach the ceiling, Lo Yuchalamo, so then it's not going to be able to stand in such a situation. But the Gemara still asks, Why not just make the wall as high as it can go? And the rest, you should make a curtain. And the Gemara says to that, Amar Abaya, by it says Gemiri, because there's a tradition, Ikulu bebinyan, Ikulu beparochas. Either the whole thing should be a wall, it should be built, or the whole thing should be a parochas, should be a curtain. Ikulu bebinyan, Mimikdash, either it should all be built like the Beis Mikdash Rishon, Ikulu beparochas, or it should all be a curtain, Mimishkan, that we would learn from the Mishkan, but you can't have it partially be a wall and partially be a curtain. And the Gemara continues, Iboy Lu, they had the following question, Hain Visidon, Odil Mahain below Sidon. When the Mishnah says that these brick are a certain size, meaning our mission in the first mission of Baba Basra, is it referring to the size including the plaster, the coating of plaster that's around the bricks, or is that not including the coating of plaster? And actually, the bricks were a little larger than what the Mishnah says. Amar of Nachmar Yitzchak, of Nachmar Yitzchak says, Mistab Rahain Vesidon, it makes sense to say that whatever measurements the Mishnah is giving, it's including whatever coating there was. Because if you think it's giving us the measurement without the coating of plaster, listen to so it should at least tell us what that. That full measurement is. Why would you tell us a partial measurement? Rather, you see from this that the Mishnah is the full measurement, including the plaster that is that acts as a coating for the bricks. But the Gemara says, Lo, no, and it really could be that the measurement given in the Mishnah is not including the plaster that surrounds the bricks. But since it's not even a tefach, that Sidon, since the plaster is not even a tefach, Lotani, so the Mishnah doesn't bother to teach something that's less than a tefach. The Gemara says, What do you mean? But it says by the bricks, Zenos in Tefach Umechsa, Vizenos in Tefach Umechsa. This one gives a Tefach and a half, and this one gives a Tefach and a half. You see that a half a Tefach is considered significant enough to mention in the Mishnah. So the same thing should be by the plaster. If the plaster was there, even if it's less than a Tefach, it should be mentioned. But the Gemara says to that, that's not a proof. Hasim over there, Chazi Litztarufa, you can join the one half Tefach to the other half Tefach, and it is a full Tefach. The idea is that they're each giving one and a half Tefach, but the total size is three tvachim, and so therefore it makes sense to, to mention the half a tefach over there by Levenim, but that would not necessarily be true if you're talking about the coating of plaster that's on the bricks. 
And the Gemara continues, Tashma, coming here, a proof from a mission in Erevin. The Mishnah says, HaKora Sha'amru. When they talk about the beam, this is the beam at the entrance of an alleyway when you're making an Erev, so you have to have a beam across the top. So it has to be, Rochva Kedei Lakabal Ariach. It has to be wide enough that you can put an Ariach, which is a half brick, on top of it, and it would be able to hold that Ariach. The Ariach, Chatsi Levena Shel Gimel Tvachim, and the Ariach is a half a brick, and the brick would be three Tvachim, so the Ariach is half of that. And so you see clearly it's three Tvachim. And if it's three Tvachim, so it sounds like when we're saying it's three Tvachim, that seems to be three Tvachim without the plaster. And the Gemara answers to that, Hasan Barav Ravasa, there we're talking about the larger kind of Levena. There was larger bricks, which were three Tvachim without plaster. But it could be that our Mishnah Baba Basra, it's talking about a brick that's three Tvachim with the plaster. And the Gemara says, Dekonam, we bring a proof to this as well. To Katani Shel Shlosha Tvachim, it says it's a Levena of three Tvachim. Mechlal Di Kazutra, that sounds like you can have a Levena that's a little less than three Tvachim. And the Gemara says, Shvam, you know, indeed we see that this is the case. And Rashi explains, Hasan Barav Ravasa over there in Erevin, we're talking about large bricks Umasnis and Bizutras and our mission in Baba Basra is talking about smaller bricks the Imsidan that even with the plaster Lohavel Gimel Tvachim it's only gonna be three Tvachim. And the Gemara continues at the two dots. Amar of Chista, of Chista says, Lo listor inish beikinishta, adabani beikinishta achrisi. A person should not destroy one base haknesses, one shul, until he builds another shul. Iko diamri mishum pshiyusa. Now some say the reason for this is because of negligence. We're concerned that he's not actually going to build the other shul. Iko diamri and others say mishum tzuluye. It's because you need a place to daven in the meantime. And Rashi explains mishum pshiyusa. Dilma misarmi onus. Maybe an accident will occur. Upashi v'lo bano achrisi. They're going to be negligent and they won't build the other one. That's why you have to build the other one first. Or Mishum Tziluye calls Man Habinyan if, you're not, if they're not going to build the other one first. So all the time that they are building, they're not going to have a place to daven. And the Gemara continues, My Beinayu, what's the difference between the two opinions in terms of why they have to build the other one first? Ika Beinayu, the difference is, the Ika Beiknishta Achrisi, let's say there's another Beis Akneses, or the Mesor Sashas has another Girsa, there's a Duchto Litzluye, there's another place to daven, meaning to say, if you have a place to daven in the meantime, Time. So then according to the one that says that the reason you need to build the Beis HaKnesses first is to have a place to daven, here you already have a place to daven in the meantime. But according to the one who says you have to build the second one first because of a concern of negligence, so even if you have a place to daven, that's not going to be sufficient. Still you have to build the second one first in order to avoid a situation of Pshiyusa, a situation of negligence. And the Gemara continues, Mareymar Umar Zutra, Sasri, Uvanu Bekaita, Besisva, Uvanu Besisva, Bekaita, Mareymar and Marzutra, they would destroy and build a summer shul in the winter and a winter shul in the summer. And Rashi explains, Bekaita, Besisva, Beis Haknesses, Hayel Hamli Mosachorif, they had a synagogue, they had a shul for the winter. Namuch Bixalam Rechavim, it was low, it had thick walls. The Chalonus Motam, it had very few windows, when they had Sina, that was a way to keep out the cold. Ovi Mosachama, Beis Haknesses, Acher, Sha'avar Shol, Eid Bo, and then in the summer, they had another Beis Haknesses where the air would be able to come into that Beis HaKnesses to keep it that it wouldn't get too hot. And the point over here is that during the summer when they use the summer shul, so that's when they would build the winter one and vice versa. That way they would always have a place to daven. And the Gemara continues, Amar le Ravina le Ravashi. Ravina said to Ravashi, Gavu zuzi umachti. Let's say they already collected the money to build the new shul and it's placed right before them in that situation. My, what would be the halacha? Could they demolish the old shul before they build a new one in that situation? Because the money is ready to go. Amar le said to him, Dilma is Maybe what will happen is there will occur an incidence of Pidyon Shvuyim where they have to redeem a captive for Yahavi Lu, and then they'll give the money to them. They'll use the money for the captives. And so you don't really know for certain that the new shul will be built. Shrigi Livni Vahadri Hudri Umachti Kashuri. Let's say you have the bricks, they're all piled up. You have the boards, you have the beams, everything is ready to go. So, my, what's the halach in that case? Can they demolish the old shul first? Amar Le said to him, Zimnin, Demisarmi Lu, Pidyon Shvuyim. Again, the same thing. Maybe you'll have a situation of of having to redeem captives, mizavni v'yahavilu, and then you're going to have to sell these bricks and these boards and these beams, and you're going to have to give the money for pidyon shvuyim. But the Gemara says, Yachi, if so, afilu banu nami, then even if they build the new shul still, maybe there'll be pidyon shvuyim, and you'll have to sell the, this new shul in order to redeem the captives. Who says that that is a certainty? Amar he said back to him, in terms of that, we're not concerned. Dear say de inchi lo mizavni, people don't sell their dwelling places. The same would be true for a built shul. You're not going to sell that for the purpose of pidyon shvuyim. But the Gemara continues, Velo Amr, and this halach is, is only stated, meaning to say, when we say you have to build the new shul first before you demolish the old one, that's only true, to you, if you don't 
once he cracks in the old shul. Avochazi beit to you, but let's say there are cracks in the old shul, so then sasri uvani, then you can demolish first, and then you can build a new one. Kihadar Ravashi was like a situation with, with Ravashi. Chazaba to you, bechnishta de masa mechasia. He saw that there were cracks in the synagogue in the shul of masa mechasia. Sasri va'ile le purya So what he did was he demolished it and he brought his bed there. The reason why he brought his bed there was the idea was now for sure they would have a motivation, so to speak, to make sure to build the new one. Velo Afka, he didn't take his bed out at the maskan le shafiche until the new shul was finished being constructed to the point where they even had the gutters, even those were installed. And then at that point, he removed his bed. And Rashi explains, Aile le purya le he brought his bed over there, Kadesh lo yesiyayish bevinyano, so that they wouldn't give up on building the new one, Shacham of Agashamim so the sun and the rain would bother him, and that would again give a motivation. And Shivchi, again, that's the Mirazvin that refers to the drain pipes. He didn't remove his bed until those were installed. And the Gemara continues, Ubava ben Buta, Hechi Asve le Eitza le Hordis le Mistre le Beis Amikdash. But Baba ben Buta, how did he give advice to Hordis that refers to Herod to destroy the Beis Amikdash, meaning Hordis? He destroyed the Beis Amikdash before he built a new one, and that should be problematic. Vamar of Chista, but of Chista said, Lo Listor Inish Beikanishta, the Bani Beikanishta, Chris, a person should not destroy one shul until he builds another shul. And the Gemara says, Yiboy, same if you want, we could say as follows, to you a chazabe, he saw that there were cracks in the Beis HaMikdash and therefore it's permissible in that situation. Yiboy, same or if you want, we could say Malchus Hashani, it's different when you're talking about a kingdom, when you're talking about a government, the Lohadra Bay, because they're not going to retract, meaning in a situation of somebody like Hordus, where we're talking about a Malchus, so there there's no concern that he's not going to rebuild the Amar Shmuel, because Shmuel says, Yomar Malchus Karnature, if a government, if a kingdom says, we're going to uproot mountains, Akarturi, they will indeed uproot mountains, Velo Hadar Bay is not going to retract. And the Gemara continues, Hordas Avda the base Chashmonoi Have. Hordas was actually a slave in the house of the Chashmonoi. Nasan Einov Beosa Tinokas, and he placed his eyes, he wanted to marry a particular young girl. Yom Achad Shamahu Gavra Baskala. One day, this particular individual, meaning Hordas, he heard a Baskal come out. The Yomar and the Baskal said, Kalavda Demarid, any slave who rebelled, Bells, Hashta, right now, Matzlach, he will be successful. So if he understood that he would be successful if he rebelled against his masters. So come katlinu lakulu marvase vishire lahi yanukta. So he went ahead and he killed all of his masters and he left this one young girl. Kichazasahi yanuksa de kaboy liminsive. When this young girl saw that he wanted to marry her, Slikala Igra, she went up to the roof of Varama Kala Amra and she said in a loud voice, Kalmanda Asi Vamra mi base Khashmonoi Kasina, anybody who says that I come from the house of the Khashmonoim, Avdahu, that person is actually a slave. Because the only one that remains is that young girl, meaning herself. The only one that remains is me. But that young girl, she's fallen from a roof to the ground. In other words, she killed herself. So the Gemara says, So what what Hordas did was he, he encased her for seven years in honey in order to preserve her body. Some people say that he actually had relations to, with her, meaning he had relations with the corpse. There are others that say that he just preserved the body, but he did not have relations. And the Gemara explains, Those who say that he, that he had relations with her, the reason why he preserved her body was in order to satisfy his Yetzir Hara, his evil inclination. Now, according to those who say that he didn't have relations with the corpse, the reason why he preserved her, so that people would say that he married the daughter of a king because he wanted to be the king. Amar, he said, Man darish Who's the one that darshaned that it has to be from among your brothers that you have a king? That I, who am just an evid, is not able to be a king? Rabbanon, it's the Rabbanon who darshaned that. So come katlinu lekula Rabbanon. So he got up and he killed all of the Rabbanon. And shavke lebava ben buta, but he let bava ben buta live lemishkal eitzim mine in order to take advice from him. And we will continue with this discussion in the next video on Daf Dalid Ahmed Aleph.